Are there any supplements that you think that people should be having? I'm probably not gonna list them all. Wabi. Selenium. A bit of iodine. Vitamin C. Potassium. And collagen protein. Creatine. Vitamin C. Magnesium. Magnesium. And magnesium. Magnesium. And magnesium. Everybody's on this big magnesium kick. Everybody's taking magnesium here. And the magnesium is walking around in a couple of animals. Like vitamin D3. Or vitamin D. Vitamin D. I think in 10 years, we're gonna be like, you know what? We should not have been taking all that vitamin D. Desiccated organ supplements. A liver supplement. And supplements, even if they are organ supplements, are processed. Are there any supplements that you think that people should be having? But, uh, I recommend plenty of salt on a carnivore diet, and I recommend that you go out of your way to get minerals and uh, potassium and magnesium on a carnivore diet. And here's why I think it's ancestrally appropriate for us to kind of think about salt and think about um, minerals and electrolytes on a carnivore diet. M meat definitely has all those things, but it may not have it in the, the amount that we need as human beings. And so what you have to think is, let's go back in time 100,000 years. What did people drink? Did they drink water? that they drank water 100%, no doubt about that. But did they drink city water? Did they drink water that was devoid of minerals and electrolytes? No, they drank surface groundwater. They drank water out of a stream, out of a river, out of a lake, out of, out of a mud puddle. All of these sources are rich in minerals and rich in the, the electrolytes. So I think that they didn't have to worry about supplementing with electrolytes on a carnivore diet because they were they were naturally supplementing by drinking groundwater. That's the water they had to drink, so that's what they drank. And all of those sources are rich in these electrolytes and minerals. So I think a lot of people try to do just beef and water. And, and so I think a lot of those people are gonna have trouble because they're not getting enough salt in their diet because they're not getting enough electrolytes and minerals in their diet because the water that they are drinking has been artificially treated to remove. First of all, remove dangerous things, of course, that's why it's treated, but it also removes all the, most of the minerals and electrolytes. And, and so then therefore you're, you're winding up electrolyte depleted, salt depleted, because you're not adding salt to your diet and making sure that you mine your minerals and get plenty of electrolytes. In fact, this is, what you bring up is a very valid point. In this era of abundance, there are very, very few people who don't get adequate nutrition because we're eating such massive quantities. And even if a small fraction of what we eat has nutritional value, it's more than enough. Um, but the problem is that the mixture and the arrival of those nutrients and the use of those nutrients by your body becomes dysfunctional. So it's not that they're absent in your body. It's they're not working in the right place or they're not able to work. So, for example, everybody's on this big magnesium kick. Everybody's taking magnesium here. And what's the best? I, I test magnesium. I do a lot of blood work on my patients. I never see low magnesium levels. Not in my health, not in my, not, not in my regular walking patients. In the hospital, I sometimes see low magnesium. We correct that. But it's very rare for me to measure that in my patients that walk through the door. But they assign blame to magnesium every time they have a muscle cramp. They don't know. And it may be that their magnesium is fine in their body. It's just that they, the diseases they've caused themselves prevent it from being active at the place where you need it, which is in your muscles. Uh, and that's an electrolyte shift problem, not a total magnesium consumption problem. Mm -hmm. So, all, and, and we've bought into the internet selling us a bunch of stuff because, oh, your magnesium levels are low. Oh, oh this is low. Nobody asks why is it low? So we're filling our, you know, how the devil could we actually have survived as a species if we have to take all these supplements suddenly now when we've never taken them before as a species? You know, I'm from Africa. There's not a lot of magnesium glycinate bottles hanging on bushes in the African savanna. So it's, the magnesium is walking around in a couple of animals over there. To look at our food supply, the nutrients are nothing like our ancestors got, you know, just like farmers know that they need to rotate their crops because those certain crops suck all the nutrients out. We used to find magnesium in our water supply, but even I live on a well, I live way out in the woods on a well and our well has, or it's devoid of magnesium. And the next best source is halibut, which doesn't have nearly as much magnesium as what you, we used to find in our water supply. So things like magnesium is a really great supplement. And 
um, they're depending on what I'm dealing with, with a client, I, I suggest a lot of them because it's just going to help the healing faster and you don't have to do them, but there are certain things that like food can't necessarily heal a really bad hormone imbalance, or if you have eczema or, um, you know, rosacea, things like that. Yeah. Eliminating certain foods, but then you want to heal it faster. Who doesn't want to heal it faster? And so I always recommend, you know, certain supplements that help that way too. Two, that's two side questions. Some people, I think through an adaptation stage and depending on their history and their goals, some supplementation may make sense. It's, it's kind of very individualistic. I think electrolytes. So that is one thing that I've taken. Um, I, mostly because I, I talked with Rob Wolf, uh, who has this company element who basically it's, just, it's basically like salt, but also there's some magnesium potassium. Um, cause I was looking for a supplement for people during adaptation and they had good, high quality. So it, whatever they sent me some, it's great. I taste good. Probably too good. That's what, that's my, that's my, they have an unflavored brand as well, which I, which is good. Um, but so for, it, it can be helpful for people during adaptation, they tend to skimp on electrolytes, notably salt, um, early on. And so I like people that are adapting to kind of air on the high side with their salt. Initially, I feel like that can help the adaptation. Um, beyond that, uh, some people are, there's just a lot of like inherent fear around if they're going to all carnivore. So sometimes like, well, if you're just super afraid about not getting enough vitamin C, just take a little bit. I recommend usually just a very little bit, but just to cover their basis. So a lot of times it's just like, that's, I mean, that's how I view supplements in general. They should just be used to like, give you like if you if this is what you need and you're trying to rely on a supplement to give you that much there's a problem a supplement is supposed to be like okay this is how much you need to be optimal and you're getting this much in the diet and you just want to kind of like top it off okay that's that's how i view supplements and i feel like if someone's eating a really like sound diet they shouldn't need much if any supplements one would be like I know a lot of people that have thyroid issues and I, I, I tend to recommend like some, a little bit of iodine can help support the thyroid, especially early on. Uh, but in general, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, I know body, bodybuilding background. A lot of people take, I took creatine religiously. Like I did all the research on it. it's like safe. It's effective. One of the very few things that is like science backed. but if you're eating two to three pounds of red meat a day, like I, I do, um, you're pretty much saturating creatine stores with the red meat. So that supplement stuff, like the benefit really falls off. So, and I, I kind of did a self-test on this where you know, I, I went all those years without, you know, eating all that red meat, no supplement. And I was like, all right, let's supplement creatine, see what happens. Cause normally in the past, if I did not take creatine and then I take it, I would gain probably roughly five pounds of holding extra water. And sure enough, I supplement with creatine did not gain any weight. So I was like, but likely, you know, my hypothesis is that the creatine stores are already saturated with the diet. So long story short is I'm sure there's some supplements that people could consider taking based on their unique situation. But in general, like, I think a lot of times they do more harm than good. A lot of times we take a supplement just to learn like a couple of years later, like, oh, we really shouldn't be taking that. Um, that's one of the things I think about vitamin D right now, because I look through the, the, the literature and there's almost seems like there's no downside to taking vitamin D. And I'm like, I think in 10 years, we're going to be like, you know what? We should not have been taking all that vitamin D. Yeah. Because the fat soluble vitamins work very synergistically, meaning like the amount of one affects the amount of the other. Like if you have way too much uh, vitamin A, for example, it can bring your vitamin K D levels down too low because of how they balance each other out. Um, and so, you know, it's just something I think about. So I, I generally, I'm like, I feel like the most natural thing is like supplements are very natural. <laughs> so I know like winter's coming here in St. Louis and we're not going to have very much sunlight and vitamin D is super important, but I probably will not be supplementing it. Magnesium or vitamin D, I think are, are two that are pretty that were most people are pretty deficient in uh, and for reasons of the of sleep and their immune system um, and just depending on the, the climate that they're in if they're not getting enough sun I think those two are very important um, even supplementing with trace minerals in your water because we're not getting these things in our in our soil 
Um, as far as other types of supplements, if it is for a specific issue, um, I'm not against it, but to just kind of give a supplement to cover all the bases or to be um, like a generalist, I, I do not push supplements. In fact, I eliminate supplements right off the bat, right off the get-go and say, all right, let's heal with food first and we can add supplements later if we have to. As far as the biggest thing lately is organ supplements. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you kind of my take on it. Um, is it better than not having any organs at all? Yes, technically you could say that. But, um, you know, is, is finding a way to have the real food source, a couple ounces a week, the better option? Absolutely. If we think of it in, in the sense of why did we go to, an, uh, you know, a more whole foods carnivore keto approach, it's to get away from processed things and supplements, even if they are organ supplements are processed. So um, do we know the absorption or how much our body is using of these? No, we really don't. Similarly, let's say, you know, people uh, in their everyday life are trying to get away from the aluminum in their cooking pans or the plastics because of xenoestrogens. These supplements are in a facility that are being processed on a conveyor belt and going, you know, having potentially uh, exposure to heavy metals and, and all of these impurities. And you're saying, but that's okay. I'll put that in my body every single day. So for me, I don't buy it. Um, I would much rather you have the food source, the whole source, just like you would your diet um, as opposed to the supplement. The other thing that I will say is that if you don't notice a difference, I would say nine out of 10 clients that have tried these supplements um, have not, I say, I ask them what, you know, what did it do for you? Oh, I don't, I didn't notice a difference. Okay. And then the one out of 10 that did, I guarantee it was a placebo effect. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, for that reason as well, if you're not noticing a difference, then, then what are we doing here? You are spending a lot of money on something that you could get for like seven or eight dollars a pound. <laughs> My interest is maximizing potential. It's not just feeling great. I want to be as best as possible. And I have found that the main things that I need to pay attention to on this diet is vitamin D and optimizing for vitamin content. Um, so that means um, organ meets I can't stomach the taste of organ meats just yet. I know that your palate eventually changes. I haven't put myself through, like I haven't decided to do that yet, but maybe I will. What I'm doing right now is just desiccated organ supplements. You know, I just take three with one meal, another three. So six capsules a day and that's it. And of course the vitamin D. Yeah, so no, I have not taken anything um, through, the, through this whole, like 12 and a half years, really, I have not taken vitamins, supplements, no zinc, no magnesium, no vitamin C, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. Um, I also, um, through all these years, I, I personally do not like liver and I don't eat it. And I think organ meats are, are great. So I, I would also recommend like um, a liver supplement. You know, people don't want to eat liver. They could, they could take a liver supplement. Um, but if we talk about things from like an oxidative stress perspective and how we decrease the free radicals in the body, the inflammation in the body, um, we want to take things that stimulate the production of our own antioxidant systems. Because there's, there's questionable, I, I think that the idea that eating antioxidants, um, like in food, like with fruits and vegetables or you know, turmeric is a big one, like there's studies that show that there's no benefit from that as from an oxidative stress perspective. Um, I'm not going to say that that if people take them and they feel a benefit that they shouldn't take them, I'm just going to say that the research shows that when you eat antioxidants, it doesn't really seem to have an effect on your oxidative stress levels in, in lots of studies. But one thing that does show a benefit is eating foods that stimulate your body's production of antioxidants, um, like your liver's production of them. So, And one of the main foods is, is, uh, is an amino acid called glycine, um, but also cysteine. Um, and, and so those are found in high amounts in collagen protein. Um, and so, because it's a different, a different set of amino acids than we find in like muscle meat or something like that. So, so collagen protein, uh, specifically glycine, um, has been shown to increase the production of superoxide dismutase and glutathione, um, in, in, in the liver. And that is what 
that's what's really going to have an effect on the body's ability to decrease oxidative stress. But yeah, and then also from a from the perspective of the autonomic nervous system, um, there's there's not many supplements you could take. I feel like I mean you could try and get some of these adaptogenic adaptogenic herbs in there um, if people wanted to. I mean I'm a big proponent of the, like animal foods are food and plant foods are generally medicine. Um, but you don't need to eat medicine all the time if you don't want to, you know, you can use it in a certain in specific circumstances to attain um, a, a certain uh, outcome or whatever. But, you know, adaptogenic herbs um, could be used maybe. But I think the biggest one um, as far as balance in the autonomic nervous system is one is a supplement called wabiine. And this wabiine has been shown to directly increase sympathetic activity to the heart, or sympathetic signal or parasympathetic signaling to the heart. Um, so most people are in this state of too much sympathetic during the stress state. And this wabiine seems to be able to balance that by bringing in this parasympathetic signaling to have a balanced signal again. And like I said, our, our body makes this for that, that purpose. Um, but we just found that uh, we found the same kind of compound in a plant, uh, in a seed of a plant, and we extracted it. And now you can use it for that. And uh, it definitely helps people who have severe angina, who have um, heart failure, um, you know, get back to this balanced signaling in, in the heart. So people can can look into that as well. God, well, I'm running some experiments on myself right now with some things. So I do take supplements. I'm probably not going to list them all because I do different experiments. I try different products and I have companies that reach out to me and I review things. And so it's a little bit not fair. Um, again, like it's almost too many things. I want people to be as minimal as possible. But again, remembering I depleted myself for 14 years. I also went through mold illness in my house. I've broken my back. I've blown three discs. And from you, you deplete yourself, things are going to happen. So I'm still repairing. I went through periods where I was making myself eat sardines every single morning for breakfast. I mean, I'll go through these things. I make my gag down the salmon row. I hate it. But I'd rather get my omega-3s from sardines and salmon than from pills. Now I've taken a break because I'm like, I don't want to keep eating things I hate. I'm taking omega-3 capsules right now because I needed a break just because I'm like, I, I just don't, I'm like, I'm sick of it, right? The only argument I, I think carnivores can be deficient and I could see where they could say vitamin C. I mean, potassium, magnesium. I mean, if you're eating bone marrow and broth, I mean, you, you have plenty of that, right? There's plenty of minerals. The, the, the highest mineral content food on earth are bones, plants have no minerals it's a joke the soil has no minerals we all know that the soil is depleted there's like nothing in there mm -hmm. right so the reality is even the animals are pretty deficient in magnesium and boron and some other things because there is nothing in the soil so many of us may need to be still grabbing more minerals because you know there's just not that much in the soil even for them so animals are not getting everything that they need out of the plants by any means, but still the most concentrated places of that is the bones. That's why they're hard. So eat okay. some small, eat a bunch of sardines with a bunch of bones in it. You got a lot of bioavailable minerals. So I take vitamin D3 and then I do selenium at B complex and something else. I can't, I just started a new one, but I can't remember what it's called, but it's something for thyroid and I'm experimenting with it, but that's pretty much the supplements that I do and electrolytes I consider that a supplement so do you feel like you notice a difference if you don't have them then or why are you having why do you take the supplements I'm doing an experiment <laughs> so I, I keep you know read all these books that other people have written about thyroid health and they're all like supplement 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 and I never really took supplements not religiously and really not enough to do anything so I thought well I'll do 60 days taking supplements and see if it affects me or changes anything. I can't tell that it has so far. And uh, so, yeah, I'm mostly doing it for research right now. We're all so unique and different that if someone's trying to 
heal a thyroid or deal with the hormone imbalance, or maybe they don't have exposure to as much sunlight. We're all going to require different things. You know, we don't, no one really has the answer. There is no one generic. Everybody should be taking this certain supplement or you should have X amount of electrolytes each day. We're all just so unique and different. So I would just test things out for myself and see if I notice a difference in supplements or electrolytes. If you got any value from this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.